Hello and welcome to Brief Tomb. Today we bring you the beloved franchise How to Train Your Dragon. It's packed with secrets, ancient god tales, and brave Vikings who constitute a set of interesting characters and dragons. So sit back and bring some popcorn and other snacks because this will be a long video. Before we start, let's head to the most recurring characters briefly. Hiccup Horrendous Haddock III is the main protagonist of the How to Train Your Dragon franchise. He's the son of Valka and the late hooligan chief Stoic the Vast. Throughout the franchise, Hiccup goes through various stages of his life, starting from being 15 years old in the first film to being 30 years old in the epilogue and homecoming, and he becomes later the chief of the tribe. His best friend is his dragon, Toothless. Astrid Hofferson is a female Viking warrior and rider. Her character evolves from a tough, strong, and brutal dragon-killing warrior to a self-assured, competitive champion of the dragon races and Hiccup's longtime girlfriend and later wife and the tribe's chiefess upon marrying Hiccup. Her dragon is Stromfly. Stoic the Vast was the chief of the hooligan tribe and Hiccup's father. He is proud of his son and expects the best from him. He also sacrifices himself to save Hiccup. His dragon is a thunder drum named Tornado. In the second film, Stoic has a new dragon, a rumblehorn named Skullcrusher. Fishlegs Justin Ingerman is a rider and Hiccup's closest friend. He is a compassionate, caring person and has incredible knowledge about dragons. His dragon is Meatlug. Snotlout Jorgensen is an arrogant rider, bordering on narcissistic and prone to grandiose delusions of perfection. He has a crush on Astrid and his dragon is Hookfang. Roughnut and Toughnut Eugene Thorsten are a twin rider and they often argue with each other to the point of physical violence they share a two-headed dragon called Barf. So the story takes place on the Isle of Burke, an island located on the meridian of misery in a series of islands between Greenland and Norwegian seas that are known to have frigid, long winters and dry summers. The island became home to the many Vikings who created tales about the dragons that plagued their everyday life. These tales were passed down to the Hooligan tribe, whose first chieftain is Hamish I. A big dragon nest is near those islands, and these dragons raid said islands to steal the Vikings' livestock because they don't want to get killed by their lord, though. Red Death. This kicks off the long-running war between the dragons and the Vikings. A prominent tribe of dragon hunters called the Dragon Hunters uses a spyglass device called the Dragon Eye that is passed down through the tribe and is used to get information about the dragons and their locations so that they hunt and sell them. Eventually, it gets abandoned in the graveyard. Around this time, a separate sect of dragon hunters settle on Dramelin Island. Their leader, Ingar Ingerman, trains the dragons to replicate any dragon fire, revolutionizes dragon hunting, and creates a long-standing following called the Loyal Order of Ingerman. On the opposite side of the coin, there is a tribe on the island of Caldera K, known as the Defenders of the Wing, that worships the dragons, which shows they were ahead of their time. Back to Hamish, and after his death, he leaves a big treasure to the next hiccup, but he does not make it easy. He creates a map along with a key comprised of three parts and hides his fortune behind an elaborate treasure hunt. His death is a mystery since he only left Berg once, and his ship crashed in the ship graveyard. Was a Viking with the first idea to classify dragons, and he's Gobber's great-great-great-grandfather. Bork contributed significantly to the understanding of dragons. He also attempted various professions, but was always hindered by passing dragons. Despite the risks, Bork accumulated extensive knowledge about dragons and documented it in a book known as the Dragon Manual after some impossible adventures on multiple islands. He divided the dragons into seven classes, which were passed down and modified through generations. The Isle of Burke celebrates Bork through a week-long event known as Bork Week, and his collection of writings, known as the Bork Papers, is considered an important piece of knowledge. It's how the Vikings of Burke know the weaknesses and methods needed to slay the dragons and, in the future, to train them. The book was passed down within Bork's family until they were eventually inherited by Gobber, who then presented the Bork Papers to Hiccup on behalf of the Burke Dragon Training Academy. After a few centuries of dragons, Stoic, a tough chief, is born who befriends Gobber. They decide to search for the island of the hidden treasure, but they always fail since Hamish II never left it for them. Stoic also hears stories from his grandfather about a tribe known as the Berserkers who chain down strike-class dragons called Squirrels and use their lightning to attack their enemies. However, he becomes familiar with the tribe later on. Gobber has an interesting childhood. On a vacation with his parents, he enters an icy cave in search of a treasure and finds a wall of frozen Vikings, one of whom has a treasure chest, takes the treasure chest for himself, then he suddenly meets the Bone Keeper who attacks him, but he manages to escape. He then lives with the Chillblains and plays the Pan Pipes. Gobber opens the chest and finds a bone that has been used as a belt for years. That bone is a missing bone from the dragon, which is why the Bone Napper dragon keeps chasing Gobber down for it. 
Aside from Gobber, Stoic is also a good friend with Alvin. One night, and during a dragon raid, they encounter a monstrous nightmare, the deadliest species of stalker-class dragon, and the two get heated over how they should handle fighting the beast and evacuating citizens. Alvin defies Stoic's orders and acts on his own, resulting in several casualties for the townsfolk. Since that incident, their relationship deteriorated and Stoic put Alvin in exile, forcing him to live like an outcast. It's here where Gomber loses one of his limbs and becomes the village's smithy. Fast forward a few years later and out of nowhere, dragons attack Burke and the Vikings attempt to kill them. However, Valka has a compassionate and empathetic nature towards dragons. She believes that fighting them would only worsen the situation. When dragons sneak into their house, Valka rushes to save Hiccup but realizes that the dragon is not harming him but playing with him. Valka initially fears the dragon but later realizes it's a gentle creature. However, Stoic suddenly attacks which scares the dragon that scratches Hiccup's chin, leaving a scar that Valka notices 20 years later. Despite saving Hiccup, the dragon takes Valka to Dragon Mountain while her husband believes she's dead, especially after searching long enough for her. Due to the dragon's scourge, several tribes unite to decide their fate. During a meeting, a cloaked man later revealed to be Drago Bloodvist entered the room. Noted for his scars and a cloak made of dragon skin, Drago claimed to free mankind from the tyranny of dragons, provided that they followed him. The audience laughs and Drago leaves, taunting them without his presence. He then ordered his dragons to attack the hall, burning it to the ground and killing all the chieftains except for Stoic who escaped the havoc. In his last moments of consciousness, he sees Drago and Krogan flee on the back of a dragon. The Night Fury A few years later, and as has been happening for seven generations, dragons attack the Isle of Burke again to collect food when the Vikings are done fishing for months in the sea, and during the attack, Hiccup shoots at a Night Fury to impress the rest of the tribe, but his action backfires as it allowed the dragons to run with their livestock. His overprotective father then berates him for being outside during the attack and disobeying orders. The next day, he goes to the forest and finds that the Night Fury he has captured is still alive. He tries to kill him to prove himself, but he's unable to do so and frees him instead. The dragon escapes without killing Hiccup. Later, and before Stoic leaves to look out for the dragon's nest and destroy it once and for all, he orders Hiccup to train to kill dragons with the rest of the teenagers. But of course, Hiccup can't kill, especially after venturing into the forest and discovering that the Night Fury is in a cave and can't fly independently due to missing part of its tail. Although the Night Fury notices Hiccup's presence, it does not react or take any action. Hiccup befriends the Night Fury dragon, which he names Toothless, although his teeth just retract and their forbidden bond grows as Hiccup feeds and interacts with the dragon that even allows him to attach a prosthetic tail fin so that it flies but only when Hiccup rides him. With the help of Hiccup's new friendship and the knowledge from the dragon manual that Gobber gave them, he learns various ways to tame the dragons, which impresses Burkians and leaves the other teens jealous and confused. One day, Astrid is annoyed at the fact that she can't compete with Hiccups, especially when he's been chosen to be the first dragon killer among them, follows him and discovers what he's up to. When she does, she runs to the village, but Hiccup catches her and they fly together. That's when she realizes that she's wrong about the dragons. This incident makes Astrid warm up to Hiccup and they become friends for now. Toothless guides them to the dragon's nest, where Hiccup and Astrid notice dragons feeding livestock to an enormous dragon red death, ensuring they're not eaten by it. A few weeks later, Stoic returns to the Isle of Burke after another failing mission to find the nest, only to be amazed at news about Hiccup's progress. Well, not the one of flying with Toothless, but the one of training the dragons. In the fighting ring, Hiccup tries to show the Burkeans that dragons are kind creatures by refusing to kill the monstrous nightmare. However, things go wrong and Stoic gets scared and orders the fight to stop, causing the dragon to attack Hiccup. Toothless, who had heard the commotion and yelling, successfully defends Hiccup from the monstrous nightmare, but unfortunately Unfortunately, he gets captured by the Burkeans. Stoic then confronts Hiccup for his alliance with the dragons, although Hiccup tried to explain everything. He also reveals that he's been to the dragon's nest, which made Stoic use Toothless to find it and exterminate the dragons. Luckily, Astrid, along with Snotlout, Fishlegs, and Roughnut and Toughnut, team up with Hiccup to rescue the Burkeans from the Red Death after flying to the nest with the remaining dragons. In the battle, the ship that Toothless is chained to sinks, but fortunately, Hiccup dives and saves him. Stoic apologizes to Hiccup, and then Hiccup kills the Red Death 
by having Toothless shoot a plasma bolt into its mouth, but in the process, Hiccup is hit and falls into a coma, and when he wakes up, he discovers that he has lost his left foot, which is now replaced with a prosthetic leg. He goes outside and sees that Birkins and Dragons are now living in harmony. This moment is marked by Astrid kissing Hiccup on the lips. Defenders of Burke The village is now living peacefully with the Dragons when one day the Bone Napper attacks Gobber as he has the Dragon's missing white buckle, which is a crucial piece of the Dragon's bone armor neck plate. Gobber gives the piece to the Bone Napper, restoring its roar, and that's how Bone Napper becomes docile and grateful towards Gobber and the group. Fishlegs points out that the Bone Napper's roar is actually its mating call, and later on, all of the Dragons migrate to Rookery Island for their brooding season, except Meatlug and Toothless, which leaves the Vikings shocked and saddened. Alvin also makes his return and launches a raid to seek out the Dragon Conqueror, which is Hiccup. Alvin kidnaps the teens to force the Dragon Conqueror to turn himself in, and when Hiccup does, he still has to prove his claims. On the Dragon Island, Hiccup rides the Night Fury, then Burke Riders arrive and they set Alvin's ship on fire. Despite all that, he promises that he'll be back to get Hiccup's knowledge, and he does this by forcing a girl called Heather to trick the Burkeans in exchange for her parents' freedom. So, one day the teens find Heather on Thor's beach, and they all openly welcome her, except for Astrid, whose jealousy turns to suspicion when she notices Heather is taking an unusual interest in the Book of Dragons. Unfortunately, Heather steals the book along with Stormfly and manages to give it to Alvin. The teens still capture and imprison her, while Astrid disguises herself as Heather and goes into the Outcast Island to get the book back from Alvin. Heather escapes during the teen's attack on Alvin and fights by their side. They defeat Alvin, and she leaves with her parents. Dagor the Deranged, son of Oswald, visits Burke to renew a peace treaty between the hooligan tribe of Burke and the Berserkers, and the dragons are put into hiding to dispel rumors that Burke is training a dragon army, which will make Dagger cancel the treaty. However, he starts to get suspicious, and for Burkeans to avoid provoking a war, the teens fake a dragon attack, and Dagor leaves the island to save himself. During that year's Bork week, Hiccup finds information and a map about an island inhabited by Night Fear within Bork's notes, and he's determined to bring Toothless to his family, only to stumble on the fact that the notes were fake and made by Mildew, who now aligns himself with Alvin, by the way. Mildew is one of the Burkeans who still hates dragons. Alvin captures Hiccup, who left without his team once again, and Mildew is also imprisoned, as he's no longer of any use. In the prison, Hiccup reluctantly allows Mildew to help him find Toothless and escape Outcast Island, a final test for Mildew's loyalty to Burke, which he achieves only to betray the Dragon Riders again, revealing that his imprisonment has also been a trick, allowing Alvin to train a whisper death. Dagger the Deranged now leads the Berserkers tribe, and he discovers what the Burkeans have been doing, which means a violation of the peace treaty between the two tribes. Hiccup, Roughnut, and Toughnut go undercover to discover that a truce is in the process of being formed between the Outcast and the Berserkers to invade Burke with the Skrill as their weapon. Dagger is giving Alvin the support of his vast fleet in exchange for the Skrill, but the truce is uneasy. The trio must now flee to release the Skrill from their control before the truce can be settled. However, Dagger betrays Alvin, claiming that because of the Skrill is the Berserker's emblem, they have full control over it and he gets rid of him. However, Alvin survives getting electrified to death somehow and teams up Hiccup and starts a new era of peace, well, for a bit. Dagger then attempts to take on Hiccup and Toothless with the Skrill, but he doesn't have Hiccup's experience with dragons and the dangerous Skrill proves more than either of them can handle. Hiccup and Toothless managed to lure the Skrill into a glacier, freezing it once again. Three years after the defeat of the Berserkers, Hiccup and his friends are enjoying life. But when Dagger the Deranged escapes from the prison on Outcast Island, he decides to take his revenge on Hiccup. Hiccup and the Dragon Riders, thanks to Johan who got his ship stolen by Dagor, band back together and track him down to a fog bank beyond their borders, discovering a huge graveyard of ships filled with treasures that Dagor would use to build a new armada. Among those treasures is the Dragon Eye, which Hiccup claimed to themselves when they found it. Over the next few months, they try to decipher the Dragon Eye and track down Dagor. The teens are imprisoned in a dragon-proof cage, and Hiccup has to choose between saving them or going after Dagger to retrieve the Dragon Eye. Luckily, Hiccup saves his friends and snatches the device from the distracted Dagger. Back on Burke, Hiccup asks Gobber and Gothi about the device which he dubs the Dragon Eye. Gothi tells them that the key to unlocking the Dragon Eye 
is a tooth from the Snow Wraith, a strike-class dragon that detects body heat as a form of sight. The riders and Gothi travel to Glacier Island to retrieve the tooth, and they find out that it is activated by the fire of any dragon and works as a light projector showing him maps, writing, and dragons he's never seen. Gustav visits the riders on Dragon's Edge, saying he's now ready to be trained, as promised by Hiccup, to be a proper dragon rider. After much delaying and keeping Gustav busy by the riders, Gustav takes the dragon eye to go on a treasure hunt. When the riders find out, they make it clear to him that he's too immature to become a rider. When Gustav runs away from the island in the night, Dagor captures him and Fanghook, whereby Gustav appears to become a part of their crew, claiming he knows how to get Dagor the dragon eye. A trade takes place, but Gustav decides to stay with Dagor. He later double crosses Dagor, returning the dragon eye to Hiccup and saving both of them in the process. Hiccup also discovers a new series of lenses for the Dragon Eye. It also turns out that Heather is Dagor's sister. Heather reveals that the parents she lost were adoptive, and all she has to remember her birth father is an old horn. When they return, the riders re-welcome Heather while offering their support, and she and Astrid take the time to bond. Together, they meet with Johan, who reveals Dagger's plans to purchase new dragon-proof ships and weaponry, and they convince the riders to launch a surprise attack. They manage to successfully capture Dagger, but Hiccup intervenes before Heather can kill him, revealing that her horn was a gift from Stoic to Oswald the Agreeable, her father, meaning that Dagger is her brother. In the end, Heather decides to leave, saying she has much she needs to figure out. The riders return to Burke upon receiving a distress letter to find the village in ruins after a hit-and-run attack by Dagger's Armada. Astrid, seeing her home destroyed, decides to train a new team of dragon riders. Hiccup notices Astrid's overly harsh regiment and points out she wants her students to fail so she has a reason to stay on Burke and protect her family. Hiccup returns to find Dagger laying siege to Dragon's Edge and sends for Astrid and Stoic as reinforcements, but the odds are still against them until the trainees appear and fend off the attack. Astrid and Stormfly encounter dragon hunters led by Riker Grimborn, who capture Stormfly while leaving Astrid adrift. The riders search for clues to find a new lens for the dragon eye that works with the Change Wings acid. The new map shows the location of a port the hunters are on their way to, and though at first the attack is successful, Riker reveals he is one step ahead. Only Hiccup and Snotlout manage to escape while the others are captured. While imprisoned, they reunite with Heather, who has now joined forces with her brother and is apparently working together with Riker. Astrid and the other riders are captured by Dagger and Heather, who are searching for the dragon's eye. Riker attempts to break them by showing their dragons imprisoned. However, they try to escape but are captured again, and when Dagger proposes to kill them, Heather convinces Riker to keep them as slaves. Meanwhile, Hiccup and Snotlout create suits of armor made from the scales of the Screaming Death to protect themselves from the hunter's dragon root-tipped arrows. They rescue the others, and both sides prepare for their next encounter. One day, Astrid arrives with with intel that the hunters are searching for the Snow Wraith. Astrid finds Heather on a nearby cliff and learns that she is acting as a spy, and then Heather gives her information about the hunters' plans, but Astrid doesn't tell Hiccup about it, but leads the riders to a cave where the Snow Wraith is hibernating. Heather misleads Riker, who finds the cave on his own, and he demands the Dragon Eye, but Heather foils his plan and has the riders sealed in the cave to flush out three Snow Wraiths. Hiccup tries to attack Heather, but Astrid intervenes and reveals Heather's plan to learn about the hunter's leader, Viggo Grimborn, which makes Hiccup disappointed in her. Hiccup, Fishlegs, and Snotlout respond to an SOS by Johan, but are surprised to find aggressive wild dragons attacking instead. They try to devise a plan, but Fishlegs ends up held hostage. Meanwhile, Astrid sets up defenses with the twins and gets into a heated argument with Roughnut. Roughnut is captured by the hunters, leaving the defense of the island to Astrid and Toughnut alone. While captive, Fishlegs befriends wild dragons and discovers they are victims of hunters. On the island, Astrid and Toughnut fend off hunters' attacks, with Heather preventing them from approaching. Roughnut escapes, and Hiccup uses his flight suit to earn the wild dragon's trust, leading them to a counterattack. In the end, Astrid and Roughnut reconcile, and the riders lead the wild dragons to a new home on the edge. The Skrill returns with the grudge against Hiccup and Toothless, wanting revenge for getting reburied in the glacier. The two escape from him into the ship graveyard, and then Hiccup lures the Skrill towards Riker, Dagger, and the hunters to have them incapacitated. The plan backfires, and the hunters capture the Skrill. The riders are cornered trying to release the 
Grill, but it unexpectedly helps them by sending the hunters away. Hiccup decides against imprisoning the Grill, and it is set free, finally giving its respect to Hiccup and Toothless. The riders successfully rescue more dragons from the hunters, leaving Riker with suspicions about Heather. Their group finally returns and meets the hunters' true leader, Riker's younger brother Vigo Grimborn, who proposes a secret alliance with Heather to oust either Riker or Dagger as possible traitors. Heather meets with the riders and informs them Vigo is after the flight mare, but this proves to be a trap by Vigo to eliminate the riders and exposes Heather as a spy. Hiccup plans to use the flight mare's mist to paralyze the hunters, but Vigo manages to escape with the flight mare, Heather, and Winshear as captives. The riders return to Dragon's Edge after a disastrous mission, finding the island torn apart by Vigo's men. However, Roughnut manages to save the Dragon Eye. Later on, Hiccup frees the flight mare and Heather after a strategic game with Vigo, but Vigo escapes and captures the Dragon Eye. With the flight mare's mist, Vigo reactivates the eye, giving him full access to its powers, and the riders resolve to reclaim the Dragon Eye before Vigo can use it. After months and on an island, Hiccup finds Dagger, who claims to be reformed, and decides to ally himself with the hooligans. The reason he was there is because he freed Heather when they found out she was a spy, so the hunters exiled him. Anyways, Hiccup agrees to work with Dagger, and the two are captured, and Dagger appears to abandon Hiccup, but later comes back riding Toothless to save him. The three escape the island, but Hiccup is still not sure what to make of his old enemy turned ally. Astrid finds a drifting ship while on patrol and becomes sick with a deadly plague called the Scourge of Odin. The only known cure is a solution made from the saliva of a buffalord, a dragon hunted to extinction centuries ago. The riders locate a living buffalord, but it refuses to leave the island where it lives. Vigo arrives, revealing he infected his men to get the riders to lead him to the buffalord. All of this so that he can sell the antidote. Hiccup reluctantly lets Vigo leave with the Buffalord in exchange for the cure, but the Buffalord fights back, forcing the hunters to release it, and Astrid is cured. The riders continue to cripple Vigo's business and destroy a dome made of bricks where he intends to put dragons in. Hiccup and the riders prepare to attack a hunter's shipyard when Dagger appears, asking for Hiccup's help to find Heather. Despite their doubts, Hiccup and the others try to keep their siblings apart by sending Heather away. Dagger, planning to change, is imprisoned after seeing the riders' plans and warns Hiccup about the trap. The riders, including Heather, refuse to listen and head to the shipyard anyway, leaving Dagger to sacrifice himself and escape. Back at the edge, Heather finds a note from Dagger revealing the truth about their father, leaving her to mourn in silence. The riders, with Dagger's information, attempt to rescue dragons from a dragon auction. However, they get imprisoned and their dragons are put on auction. The riders escape with Grump's help and rescue the dragons, but Vigo gets away with Berg's gold. Vigo offers Hiccup a truce and defines the archipelago in half to prevent war. However, the riders suspect Vigo's hiding something and investigate, only to be captured by the defenders of the wing led by Queen Mala. Hiccup stands trial and faces punishments, but sees Mala and her tribe as potential allies. They learn that the tribe is guarded by the Eruptodon, whom Mala labels the Great Protector. Hiccup realizes Vigo used them as a distraction, and now Mala suspects them of working with the hunters, then she swears to kill Hiccup herself. However, he stands trial and wins Mala's trust. They learn that Vigo plans to use the Eruptodon to destroy Dragon's Edge. The riders manage to drive off the hunters with Mala's help and recruit the Gronkles to return the Eruptodon home. Mala and the riders align to defeat the hunters for good, and Mala seems to take a liking to Snotlow. The riders attend Burke's 400th anniversary Anniversary, but their celebration is interrupted by news of a bounty on Hiccup's head. Hiccup is captured and leads the riders and Stoic on a wild goose chase. When Riker reveals there's no payment, Hiccup escapes and the riders defeat the hunters. Stoic threatens Riker and the masked man who captured Hiccup escapes. Hiccup and Heather encounter Dagur, who is seemingly aligned with the hunters, but they later discover that he's been working undercover to save his dragon from the hunters. He leaves after freeing his dragon, but he promises Heather he will answer her questions in the future. Meanwhile, Snotlout undergoes the trials to prove himself as the king of the defenders of the wing. After he saved Mala's life, he passes two life-threatening trials, but fails the third. Despite his failure, however, Mala still appreciates him. Vigo captures the Submariper to create whirlpools and block trade routes, leaving Burke to starve. Hiccup develops a diving bell and change wing acid to free the chains, but the hunters wake the sleeping Submariper. Despite his efforts, Hiccup frees the Submariper and rescues him just as the bell 
explodes, forcing Viggo to flee. Though Hiccup feels guilty, Stoic expresses confidence in their ability to stop Viggo and get the eye back. Dagger returns and joins the riders on a mission to take back Burke's stolen gold. Heather is torn between her loyalties to the riders and wanting to find her missing father with Dagger. The island where the gold is stored is empty, and the riders are captured by Viggo. Heather and Dagger work together to take down the fleet and rescue the riders, then they reclaim the hidden gold, and Heather decides to go with Dagger to find her father and rebuild the Berserker's tribe. The defenders of the wing contact their riders for help in delivering an erupted Don egg to their nesting site. Hiccup and Fish Legs face difficulties working together, and a pack of wild fire terrors kidnaps the egg. Mala attempts to retrieve the egg, but Hiccup and Fish Legs regain their synergy and realize the fire terrors are there to safely bring the egg to the nesting ground. The three trust the fire terrors to take the erupted Don egg, and it safely reaches the nesting ground, where it is bathed in lava. The twins' journey to the dangerous northern markets to fix Tough Nut's prized mace ends up with them stumbling onto a secret project by Viggo and the Dragon Hunters. While Rough Nut is captured to be used as bait, Tough Nut learns to prioritize team needs and save the others by sacrificing his Macy. The twins hold a funeral for Macy on Burke, where Tough Nut reveals stolen schematics about Project Shellfire. A freak lightning storm hits the edge, and Astrid loses her sight while trying to rescue dragons. She trains the triple strike despite her blindness. Gothi restores her sight, and she and Hiccup enjoy a perfect moment together, finally beginning their relationship, which they try to hide. After months of planning, Hiccup devises a plan to defeat Viggo and reclaim the Dragon Eye. The riders and their allies storm Viggo's base, only to find it in ruins, and an injured Viggo reveals that Riker has taken charge of the hunters and is attacking everyone, including the Berserkers. Hiccup is extremely confused, but Viggo offers the Dragon Eye as proof of his word, proposing an equal alliance to bring Riker down. Hiccup and the riders storm Viggo's base, but Riker arrives with the hunter's fleet, and the riders find out the hunters are forcing the Shellfire to attack. Hiccup rescues Viggo to stop Riker by using the Submariper to destroy the fleet. The Shellfire is freed, and Riker is consumed with the fleet. Later on in the volcano, Viggo turns on Hiccup, threatening to kill Astrid in exchange for the Dragon Eye, but Hiccup throws the eye into the volcano, and Viggo rushes to catch it, but falls to his apparent death. Hiccup and Astrid realize their relationship compromises their mission and promise to remain professional. After defeating the hunters, the riders return to Burke, but Hiccup is still determined to find Toothless's breed, which is impossible without the eye. He tries to create another one with fish legs, developing a mixture of Death Song, Amber, and Gronkel Iron to stop the lava bursts. They discover an older Garf mortally wounded, hinting that the hunters are continuing activity. The riders manage to stabilize the volcano with the help of the Gronkles and Quakens of Dark Deep, and decide to hold off on returning home to stop the hunters once and for all. The hunters also learn to tame the dragons with just one touch. Hiccup gives Astrid a pendant that his dad gave to his mom in a heartfelt moment that gets ruined, but their moment is spoiled when they discovered Snotlout recovered Viggo's sword from the Sandbuster's lair. The riders are invited to Berserker Island, where they find Dagger making Gustav a Berserker apprentice. Just as they are about to celebrate Gustav's graduation, Savage and a faction of Berserkers start a revolt and imprison Dagger and the dragons. Snotlout and Gustav work together to free Dagger, but Gustav's confidence wanes, admitting his cheating under Dagger's tutelage. The riders and Berserker siblings battle and manage to defeat Savage. Dagger admits Gustav's apprenticeship was faked, honoring Snoutlout with a Berserker trophy. Snoutlout's unfriendly attitude leads him to leave the edge after a disagreement with Astrid. He's rescued by an all-female tribe called the Wing Maidens, who plan to include him in their sacred stew due to their dislike of men. Astrid, Roughnut, and Heather infiltrate the island to save him and learn about the Wing Maiden tribe's purpose and Windshear's origin. Snotlout is nearly killed by aggressive female razor whips, but is saved by the riders and wing maidens who celebrate their new alliance. Snotlout also learns a lesson in etiquette. The Eruptodon, a dragon too old to fulfill its duties, passes its role to its child and departs for Vanaheim the dragon's final resting place. The twins disregard Hiccup's orders and follow the dragons, leaving the riders stranded on the island. Hiccup, following Mala's advice, learns to use the sentinel dragon's behavior to his advantage and, with the erupted Don's assistance, escapes. To prevent others from discovering Vanaheim, then he destroys Tough Nut's guide. Months later, Hiccup and Astrid embark on a supply run, leaving the edge vulnerable to an attack by hunters riding Singetails, led by Krogan and his titan wing Singetail. 
Even with their return, the riders are outnumbered and Fishlegs is separated from the group but returns with help from his friend Darkvark. The riders abandon Dragon's Edge and seek shelter with the defenders of the wing. Hiccup reveals his plan to build a new Dragon Eye, and Vigo attempts to reclaim the original one from the Edge's volcano. Vigo warns Krogan about Hiccup, but he wants to use Hiccup's love for dragons against him, so he uses them to attack the defenders of the wing, and now he's forced to go to Burke so that he doesn't cause more damage. Hiccup wants to save the dragons that are under the hunter's control, but his dad tells him it's impossible. He also goes to search for some materials to complete the eye, but he almost gets killed. However, Spitlout saves him and tells him about Singetail's weaknesses. Meanwhile, Stoic, the Riders, and the Burke fleets launch a preemptive strike on Dragon's Edge, but are quickly put on the defensive by the Hunters. Krogan seizes the opportunity to launch all his Dragon Flyers, leaving the Burke forces defenseless until Hiccup returns to turn the tide. The Riders eventually reclaim the Edge, but Astra discovers that Vigo is still alive and has recovered the Dragon Eye. However, Hiccup is prepared as his new Dragon Eye is almost completed. The Berserker siblings search for their father, but only find his remains and a message to Dagger saying that he loved his son and explaining his life on the island. Oswald left a message to Heather, too. They continue their father's work by helping the Sentinels defend Vanaheim from rogue Grim Nasher dragons and leave satisfied that his father passed proud. Not knowing that Heather and Johan head to the northern markets after hearing about a man who claims to have seen his dad alive. However, Krogan and the hunters set a trap and capture Windshear and demand the gem on Heather's belt, which is a lens for the Dragon Eye, in exchange for her dragon's life. Johan convinces Heather to proceed with the trade, and they're later saved by the riders and Dagor, who reveals the truth of Oswald's fate. Meanwhile, Krogan and Vigo obtain the lens, bringing Johan one step closer to finding the King of Dragons. Johan reveals that he is the head of the hunters, and for years he was pretending to side with the Burkians, but since he doesn't possess all the eyes' parts, he pretends he has kidnapped the hunters and that Hiccup has to give them the eyes part in exchange for his life. Luckily, the twins discover that he's the mole early on and ruin his plan. Knowing this, Stoic destroys Johan's merch despite being told not to and knows Burke is left with no medicines. Hiccup and his dad leave to gather willow bark but realize they're destroyed on each island, so they rush back to Burke, which they left vulnerable, and find that it is getting invaded by Krogan. Luckily, they can repel Krogan's invasion. Riders hold a meeting on Defenders of the Wing Island to discuss the threat posed by Johan. During the meeting, Dagger and Mala develop a mutual attraction. Meanwhile, Hiccup and Snotlow escort a tally to the meeting on Wing Maiden Island. A fire breaks out, and Minden, left in charge, orders the guards to address it, leaving the island vulnerable to a surprise attack. As a result, Atali is injured. Feeling remorseful, Minden, with Snotloud's help, retrieves the hidden Dragon Eye lens which the Flyers came for. Ultimately, the Wing Maidens defeat the Flyers. Johan sends Vigo to retrieve a Dragon Eye lens in a cave, but later traps him with a monstrous nightmare, so Vigo seeks Hiccup's help for the second time, after revealing that Toothless has been poisoned and they enter Johan's headquarters, where Vigo betrays Hiccup. However, this is part of their plan. They also discover that the Dragon Eye has been moved, and a fight ensues where Vigo sacrifices himself to allow Hiccup and Toothless to escape. The riders discover that Krogan is using a Death Song to lure and capture Singetails for his flyers, and decide to rescue the Death Song and cut off Krogan's supply of Singetails. Garf accompanies them back to the edge, and they rescue the Death Song. However, Garf is captured and the Singetails turn on them. Fishlegs discovers a hatchery of Singetail eggs and realizes that the Flyers are breeding Singetails. Then, the Riders destroy the Flyers' facilities and free them. Stoic is injured during a routine border check and falls into a comatose state. Hiccup holds himself responsible and assumes the role of chief. Heather informs the Riders that Flyers have followed her to Vanaheim. Hiccup has to go, but Alvin arrives with reinforcements to keep Burke safe. The riders discover the Flyers are breeding Singetails and destroy their facilities, and they get another eye lens. Johan also does. Hiccup and his team complete the Dragon Eye and find the King of Dragons, a titan-winged Dramillion on Dramillion Island. However, Johan and Krogan capture the dragon, but it is rescued and taken to Queen Mala for recovery. The team questions Johan's motives for abandoning the Dramillion but later discovers that the Dragon Eye reveals the true King of Dragons, a bewilder beast on Berserker Island.
Krogan and his forces attack Berserker Island, capturing the Bewildered Beast and Hiccup faces Johan alone while Toothless retrieves the egg. The Bewildered Beast freezes Johan and summons many dragons for help. The hunters are defeated and the Bewildered Beast escapes. Krogan is also executed by his employer, Drago Bloodvist, for his failure, and Drago begins to seek a new Bewildered Beast. Meanwhile, the Wing Maidens entrust the egg to Valka, Stoic recovers, and Mala and Dagger are married. Fishlegs and Snotlug both begin courting Roughnut, and Hiccup decides to destroy both Dragon Eyes, and the riders leave the edge to return to Burke. Legend of the Bone Napper Dragon and Gift of the Night Fury, How to Train Your Dragon, Homecoming. Hiccup confirms Stoic's suspicion, and Stoic decides to ground all dragons and prepare Burke for war. However, Hiccup disagrees with Stoic's decision and insists on maintaining peace instead of preparing for war. Despite Stoic's warning about Drago's ruthlessness, Hiccup and Astrid decide to seek out a man named Eret who may lead them to Drago's location. Hiccup proposes convincing Eret to demonstrate dragon loyalty before teaching him to ride a dragon. Other dragon riders arrive. Stoic orders Hiccup to return to Burke, but Hiccup refuses. Insisting that Drago can be reasoned with, Stoic shares the story of his past encounter with Drago, but Hiccup leaves nonetheless. Stoic demands Astrid and others to return to Burke with their dragons while he and Gobber pursue Hiccup. At night, Hiccup and Toothless are ambushed by a mystery warrior riding a storm cutter. Hiccup is captured by other dragons commanded by the warrior, while Toothless falls into the icy water. Unbeknownst to Hiccup, Toothless is rescued by other dragons as well. They're both taken to Valka's mountain. At the warrior's hideout, Hiccup calms down the surrounding dragons while the warrior approaches them and pacifies Toothless, but upon seeing a scar on Hiccup's chin, she realizes he's her son. Hiccup is shocked, but Valka leads him further into the mountain. At night, Stoic and Gomber ride on their own dragons while searching for Hiccup. They find his helmet in the water, and Stoic becomes worried about his son's safety. Inside the mountain, Hiccup and Valka discover a landscape teeming with dragons of various kinds. Valka examines Toothless and realizes his age, and Hiccup eventually admits to being the one who shot him down. He also shares how the people of Burke have changed their perception of dragons, and this is where Valka tells Hiccup about. They got separated, then she introduces Hiccup to the Bewilder Beast, the ice-spitting dragon responsible for the destruction. In the early morning hours, the dragon riders embark on a mission to find Hiccup, Stoic, and Gobber, as Astrid believes they should have returned by now. Along the way, they capture Eret to obtain information about Drago, whom they suspect has captured Hiccup and the others. After making preparations, Hiccup and Valka ride on their dragons, where Valka directs his attention to the bewildered beast that emerges from below and scoop up the fish in its mouth. Later, Hiccup teaches his mother about his new map, explaining how he discovered a new archipelago from Dragon Island. However, he pauses when he realizes that Valka is sketching out the rest of the northern landmasses in the snow, demonstrating the extensive exploration she has undertaken. Hiccup also showcases his flying skills to his mother using his flying suit. She then rubs a specific spot on the Toothless's neck, causing his dorsal blades to crack, split, and extend. Hiccup then suggests to Valka that they should go talk to Drago and try to convince him to stop hunting dragons. However, Valka believes that reasoning with Drago is impossible. Later, the dragon riders reach Drago's camp and are captured. They meet Drago, who notices the saddles on the captured dragons and questions Arid about the number of riders. Astrid realizes that Drago hasn't captured Hiccup, Stoic, or Gobber and devises a plan to scare Drago by mentioning Hiccup. However, her plan backfires as Drago decides to proceed with his agenda, so he orders his men to prepare for an invasion of the Dragon Rider's hideout and plans to attack Burke afterward. Drago also orders his men to kill Eret, but Eret is saved by Stormfly, which leads to a change of heart in him. Stoic the Vast and Gobber infiltrate Valka's mountain, and surprised to see Valka the love of his life, he stands in shock, questioning how she could abandon them for 20 years, but approaches her slowly and they share a tender moment. Later in the afternoon, Valka decides to return to Burke and resume her life alongside Stoic and Hiccup after a heartfelt moment of singing and dancing together. During the battle at Drago's fleet, the riders and Eret manage to break free from captivity and hide with the dragons to launch a surprise attack on the leader of the dragon trappers. Eret bravely enters the trap where Stormfly is held captive and expresses his gratitude to her for saving his life. However, their moment of happiness is abruptly interrupted when they notice that Drago's army lands on the beach 
and the Burkeans prepare for battle. Valka instructs Stoic and Hiccup to save the dragons, while her dragons confront Drago's men. The Burkeans fight against Drago's army and the Dragon Trapper's dragons. Drago orders his men to prepare for an invasion of the Dragon Rider's hideout and plans to attack Burke afterward. The Dragon Riders, joined by Hiccup, Valka, Gomber, and Stoic, start destroying Drago's traps and armory while Valka's Bewilderbeast battles Drago's. Unfortunately, Drago's Bewilderbeast kills Valka, becoming the new King of the Mountain, aka the Alpha, and now all the dragons become loyal to him. He attacks Valka, but Stoic saves her. Hiccup faces Drago and tries to reason with him, but Drago disregards him, citing how dragons killed his family and amputated his arm. Since then, he vowed to liberate humans of dragons. Drago orders his men to prepare for an invasion of the Dragon Rider's hideout and plans to attack Burke afterward. While Stoic fights Drago himself, the battle takes an unexpected turn when Drago's Bewilderbeast kills Valka's. Now, with the Alpha's death, Drago's Bewilderbeast is now the new king of the mountain, causing all the dragons to become loyal to Drago's Bewilderbeast who attacks Valka, who is saved by Stoic. Hiccup also arrives and persuades Drago, saying that the dragons are creatures that bring people together. But Drago disregards him, commenting on how dragons proved him otherwise when they raided his village, killed his family, and amputated his real arm. He also explains how dragons are needed to conquer those of their own kind. Hiccup sees through Drago's half-truth and says that he only wants dragons to conquer people, to control those who follow, and to kill the ones that oppose him, and Drago does not confirm it or deny it. Drago orders Toothless to use his plasma bolt on Hiccup through the Alpha's controls. Hiccup implores Toothless to snap out of it, but he prepares to shoot to kill. As Stoic reaches his son and gets between Hiccup and Toothless, he receives the blast and dies instantly unable to know if he managed to save his son. Valka confirms Stoic's death. Astrid runs to Hiccup to give him comfort and the Dragon Riders mourn their chief's death. Drago seizes control of the dragons and Toothless, momentarily released from his trance, approaches Stoic's body. Hiccup, in distress, orders Toothless to leave. Drago pins Toothless down and then commands his men to attack Burke. At night, they hold a Viking funeral ceremony for Stoic. Hiccup and the riders fly will back to Burke on the dragon's hatchlings, who are not affected by the Bewilderbeast's control, to go back to Burke. In Burke, Drago Bloodvist arrives with his Bewilderbeast and tells Burkeans of Stoic's death, then uses it to control all Burkeans' dragons. In the final battle, while the riders are distracting the Aloha, Hiccup breaks Toothless out of his trance by reminding him of their friendship. They prepare to fight Drago and, in the aftermath of the battle, Hiccup blindfolds Toothless to prevent the Alpha from controlling him again. Toothless, now glowing blue with plasma charge, breaks free from the ice, saving Hiccup and himself, then challenges the Bewilderbeast, causing it to lose control of the other dragons who joined Toothless in a final standoff against the monstrous Bewilderbeast. Toothless delivers the final shot that blasts off the Bewilderbeast's left horn, asserting his dominance, which made the Bewilderbeast retreat into the ocean, leaving Drago's ultimate fate unknown. The dragons land around Toothless and bow deeply, crowning him as the new Alpha. Dragons and Burkeans are reunited, and Hiccup, the newly crowned Viking chief of Burke, solidifies the bond between him and his mom, he also entrusts the care of Stoic's previous Rumblehorn to Eret, who graciously accepts this responsibility, expressing his honor. Astrid playfully teases Hiccup and, in a tender moment, they kiss, sealing their love and commitment, and all Burkeans join in the celebration as a new era begins for Burke. Hiccup is now the newly crowned Viking Chief of Burke, and he leads a team of dragon riders on a mission to rescue the captured dragons from the dragon trappers who have regrouped under the command of the warlords. The dragon riders infiltrate the trapper's ship using their new armor made of dragon scales, and the mission turns into an ambush, but they manage to free most of the captured dragons and flee to the Isle of Burke, which is now a human dragon utopia. Back on Burke, tensions rise as the Crimson Gore Cutter accidentally causes destruction, leading Gomber the Belch to express his frustration towards Hiccup for bringing in more dragons at Toothless for not controlling them as the Alpha. Inside the Great Hall, Gomber urges Hiccup to stop rescuing dragons and marry Astrid, but the mention of marriage makes everyone uncomfortable especially Astrid, who leaves the table. Arid informs Hiccup that more dragon trappers have been spotted, motivating Hiccup to fight them. However, Gomber warns Hiccup that he will eventually face an enemy he cannot defeat. Meanwhile, 
Grimmel the Grizzly and his Death Grippers go to the Warlord's base after being asked for help. Grimmel accepts a deal as the killer of every Night Furies which is to capture the Night Fury and bring all the dragons to the Warlords. Hiccup recalls a conversation with his late father about the Hidden World and retrieves the map he created during his time at Dragon's Edge to find it. Astrid joins him and they discuss the overcrowding of Burke and the need to find a solution before their enemies attack. Hiccup suggests relocating to the Hidden World, but Astrid is not fond of the idea. Then they share a laugh and embrace. Toothless discovers the Light Fury in the woods and becomes enchanted with her, but she flees when Hiccup and Astrid approach. Inside the stables, Hiccup informs the Dragon Riders about the encounter with the Light Fury and that she vanished without a trace. Toothless becomes eager to see her again. Astrid then teases that he's in love. Motivated by his friends and Toothless's behavior, Hiccup decides to venture into the woods with Toothless to find the Light Fury. Toughnut joins him, suggesting they have a boys' talk. Toughnut asks Hiccup if he wants to marry Astrid, but Hiccup hesitates and replies that he does not. However, Toughnut ignores his response and implies that Astrid may be looking for something more in their relationship and that Astrid looks at him with not-so-subtle disappointment. Hiccup and Toothless discover a trap in the woods, confirming that trappers have infiltrated Burke. Hiccup shares the news with Astrid, Gobber, and Eret, who warns them about Grimmel the Grizzly, a master at manipulating his prey. Despite their confidence in defeating Grimmel, Eret cautions them not to underestimate him. To prepare for Grimmel's arrival, the Dragon Riders set up an ambush and Fishlegs disguises himself as Toothless and lies on the Night Fury's bed while Astrid, Gobber, and Valka hide, waiting for Grimmel to appear. Hiccup pretends to study his maps and notes. During the night, Grimmel manages to infiltrate Hiccup's house undetected, but Hiccup, armed with his Dragon Blade, confronts the Dragon Hunter who admires Hiccup's impressive blade, but quickly incapacitates Toothless by shooting a dart from his crossbow. Grimmel reveals that both Stoic and he were aware of each other's existence, with Grimmel considering himself a superior dragon hunter. Grimmel proudly claims responsibility for the near extinction of the Night Furies and demands that Hiccup hand over Toothless. However, he soon realizes that he's been tricked when Astrid, Valka, and Gobber quickly surround him. Grimmel, unfazed, asserts that Hiccup is mistaken and that he has never encountered someone like him before he then summons his Death Grippers, who proceed to unleash a fiery assault on Hiccup's house, reducing it to ashes. The team narrowly escapes with their lives, only to find that the Death Grippers have also attacked Burke on their way out. With Grimmel gone, they all gather in the Great Hall to discuss their next step when Hiccup acknowledges their concerns and points out that Burke is becoming exposed and vulnerable. Recognizing his intention to find the Hidden World, a safe haven for dragons, and relocate all the Burkeans and their dragons there. This announcement sparks a protest from some Burkeans, but Astrid, as Hiccup's second in command, asserts her authority and urges everyone to listen to their chief. With the decision made, the Burkeans begin packing their belongings and preparing to leave Burke behind as Hiccup leads them on a journey to the west to reach the end of the world. Back at Old Burke, the Warlord's armada surrounds the island and Grimmel informs the Warlords that the Burkeans are heading west and that he has allowed the Light Fury to follow them. The Light Fury approaches the group, then disappears, causing Toothless to chase after her. However, he is unable to find her and the Light Fury surprises everyone by grabbing Hiccup, mistaking him for someone who has enslaved Toothless and dropping him. But Toothless quickly comes to Hiccup's rescue and they all join the group, laughing at the unexpected turn of events. Before sunset, the Burkeans land on a massive island, which becomes the new Burke. Initially, Hiccup plans for them to camp there for the night only, but the Burkeans argue that the monolithic island can provide them with a temporary refuge, then Valka suggests they stay longer, and Hiccup agrees until they find the hidden world. In the early morning, Toothless is awakened by the Light Fury, who leads him to the beach for a bonding experience, and Hiccup, who has followed them, gives Toothless advice on how to court the Light Fury. Toothless attempts to imitate Hiccup's moves, but this makes the Light Fury uncomfortable. He then decides to be himself and catches her attention by grabbing a stick and creating figures on the sand. The Light Fury gives Toothless a nod, indicating that she wants to fly alone with him. However, Toothless is unable to do so because of his prosthetic tail fin. Observing this, Hiccup decides to create a new tail fin for Toothless that he can control at will without the need for a rider. Astrid witnesses Hiccup making a new tail fin, believing he's accepting that he and Toothless will eventually go their separate ways. However, Hiccup reveals it's temporary and Toothless convinces the Light Fury to stay with them. Despite this, 
Hiccup finishes the tail fin and replaces the old one, which works perfectly for Toothless to leave soon after. Unlike what everyone thought, Hiccup pretends like nothing has happened. Meanwhile, Valka realizes Grimmel has tracked them down and escapes from the Death Grippers with Cloud Jumper's help, rushing back to New Burke. He's on their trail and he has a fleet of ships equipped to capture their dragons. In response, Hiccup devises a plan to capture Grimmel before he can locate them. Then, Grimmel prepares containers with deadly poison for his Death Grippers. Hiccup and the Dragon Riders infiltrate Grimmel's temporary stronghold, but the Death Grippers sense their presence and begin searching for them, which makes the group split up. Once inside the fortress, a metal net suddenly drops and traps the Dragon Riders alongside the Death Grippers. Grimmel approaches Hiccup and explains that one of the first rules of hunting is to separate the prey from its pack. Hiccup, in a state of panic, questions Grimmel's motives, to which Grimmel reveals that he had encountered a Night Fury in the past but chose to kill it, unlike Hiccup. He claims that his act earned him respect in his village, and since then, he has hunted down and killed every Night Fury, viewing dragons as dangerous thieves and murderers. Grimmel also reveals that his Death Grippers are trained to kill dragons and obey only him. Despite the dire situation, the team manages to fight back and Valka instructs Cloud Jumper to drop the net on the Death Grippers, providing the Dragon Riders with an opportunity to escape. However, Toughnut leaves his sister behind and Roughnut is subsequently captured by Grimmel the Grizzly and the Warlords. The Riders return to New Burke. They notice that Roughnut is missing, so they go back to get her. In the meantime, Roughnut annoys Grimmel and the Warlords, and when she mentions a new island, Grimmel gives her one of the baby dragons the Death Grippers eat. Hiccup, feeling worthless without Toothless, Astrid proposes to go and find Toothless. Once he climbs into the saddle, the trio leaves. Using Stormfly's tracking abilities, Hiccup finds Toothless's new home, not expecting it to be the hidden world. It is a vast chamber beneath the ocean floor. They witness Toothless's coronation as the Alpha and are ambushed by a wild rumble horn. Toothless intervenes and takes Hiccup with him while Astrid climbs onto Stormfly. They leave the hidden world, unaware that the Light Fury is following them. Toothless and Stormfly bring Hiccup and Astrid back to New Burke. Hiccup apologizes to Toothless for making him leave the hidden world. The Light Fury reveals herself and Toothless bounds towards her. Roughnut arrives and tells them she was let go for annoying Grimmel. Hiccup warns Toothless about Grimmel, but it's too late as Grimmel knocks out both Furies. Burke's dragons appear to save their Alpha, but Grimmel threatens to kill the Light Fury if Toothless does not control his dragons. Toothless orders them to follow him, and they leave New Burke with Grimmel and the Warlords. Astrid is encouraged by Valka to listen to Hiccup's frustrations and reminds him of the impact he has had on her. She encourages him to face the challenges ahead, and it's then where he resolves to rescue their dragons. Meanwhile, Grimmel captures the dragons and reveals his plan to kill the Night Fury and not give it to Warlords as promised. The Dragon Riders, except Eret, Valka, and Gomber, don their flight suits and head to the ships to fight for their dragon's freedom. They free all the dragons and engage in a battle with the Warlords' army. Hiccup manages to free Toothless and confronts Grimmel, who has freed the Light Fury and trying to escape. Toothless fires at Grimmel, but he dodges it by forcing the Light Fury to roll, forcing her to take the heavy impact of the blast. Unexpectedly, the Death Grippers attack Toothless, leading to a plan to use lightning to defeat them. Hiccup and Toothless surprise Grimmel, but Grimmel knocks out Toothless. Hiccup saves Toothless by removing the Light Fury's bridle and kicking Grimmel away, causing him to crash into the sea and die, and Hiccup is saved by the Light Fury as well. Upon returning with their dragons, Hiccup realizes it's time to let them go for their safety. He bids a heartfelt farewell to Toothless, telling him that he loves him. All Burkeans do the same with their dragons, remove their saddles from the dragons. Toothless roars and commands an exodus. They take flight and go away to the hidden world. Burkeans gather together as the dragons recede into the distance. Ten years later, after the ice melts, Hiccup and Astrid take their children to the Hidden World, where they reunite with Toothless, the Light Fury, and their nightlights. Toothless initially mistakes Hiccup for a threat, but recognizes him and covers him in slobbery licks. Hiccup introduces his children to Toothless, and they touch his snout. Astrid also reunites with Stormfly. Riding on their old dragons, Hiccup and Astrid take their kids on a flight they would never forget. 
just like every franchise, How to Train Your Dragons has theories, and today we've selected the most interesting ones, Toothless the Alpha. In How to Train Your Dragon 2, we see how Toothless defeats the Wilderbeast, which makes him the new Alpha. But what if he already was one? In the first movie, he also defeats the Red Death, which was a female Alpha, because it was able to control the other dragons. So, the theory suggests that when Toothless defeated it, he became an Alpha. So when he challenged the Wilderbeast, it was two Alphas fighting for dominance. Hiccup's Coma after fighting the Red Death, Hiccup fell into a coma that fans perceived to be longer than just a few days. His injuries were serious, yet he stood up on his feet easily and had no burns. Also, the relationship between the Burkians and the Dragons could have been built overnight. Hiccup's Dreams This theory suggests that the first series Riders of Burke was just a dream. Since the series aired between the first and second movie, nothing of its events was mentioned in the next movies, which means they never really happened.